Hey there, men. Mike Yarbrough here. Welcome to another Truck Talk Thursday episode on the Wolf and Iron Podcast. If you're just checking things out for the first time, just listening to the Wolf and Iron Podcast for the first time, I want to say especially welcome to you. And uh, look, be sure to subscribe because we've got other podcasts on the way and you don't want to miss anything. This is our, our Truck Talk episode, a little something different that I do. And um, essentially, it's just me talking to you guys from my truck, having some kind of off-the-cuff conversation, rather than the, the typical kind of well-thought-out spiel that I might give um, on, a, on the other days. We also have some interview-based podcasts, some um, solo-based uh, episodes as well that you guys will want to check out. But Wolf and Iron is all about helping you heed the high call that's on your life. It's helping you become the man that you ought to be. I believe men are called to be something uh, something daring, something bold, something special, to be leaders, to be fathers, to be husbands and example setters. And so we touch on a lot of those things here on the podcast and through the articles. If you're not aware, we also have a Facebook group. It's a free online community. And we don't let everybody in. So when you head over to wolfandiron.com forward slash the group, that'll take you over to our Facebook page. There'll be a few questions for you to answer there and uh, just to make sure you're, you're a good fit for the group. But uh, I think this one actually would be really good. This episode is going to be really good for conversation. Um, I just kind of want to warn you here. I am sipping on a Cortado, which is um, I, I've not really recently discovered these things. When I talk about off the cuff conversations, this is what I'm talking about. But I've gotten somewhat addicted to these things. And so if you're a coffee drinker or an espresso drinker and you don't know what a Cortado is, um, I'm about to rock your world. Okay, so it's basically like two two shots of espresso and just a, a dollop of some kind of foamed milk. I use almond milk. It's slightly sweet. It's a little bit lighter. And um, But, man, these things are awesome. And for about 30 minutes after I down this thing, I feel like I can accomplish anything. All the tasks that I want to get done today are definitely going to get done. And then about an hour and a half afterwards, uh, I'm just kind of back to normal. So, But so I'm kind of, I'm kind of down on this thing while I'm talking to you guys. Mm. Oh, my goodness. But uh, I'm about to start driving as well. So here we go. I want to talk today about the four steps to mastery and why we often get stuck between steps two and three. Sometimes we don't even get past step one. And the thing is, everybody has to experience these four steps. doesn't matter what it is you're mastering. It could be a musical instrument. It could be writing. It could be speaking. Everybody has to go through these four steps. And uh, but some people kind of graduate from the different steps more quickly. We just have natural giftings that make us better at certain things than other people are. And that's okay. But the four steps go like this. And I'm going to kind of think through them, talk through them really quickly, and just kind of give an overview, and then I'll, I'll address each of the individual steps. So we go from essentially step one, which is unconscious incompetence okay so we we're not good at a thing but we don't even realize that we're not good at it we certainly don't know why we're not good so it's unconscious incompetence the next step is conscious incompetence so we are aware that we are not good at a thing this can sometimes be a painful awareness like when you get called out on sucking at something but a lot of times you know if you think about this in terms of starting up practicing a musical instrument or something like that it becomes very aware that you, you become aware very quickly that you're not good at this thing. So conscious incompetence. The next step is a conscious competence. And this is, you're good at a thing, but you kind of have to think about it. You, you haven't mastered it to the point where um, that next stage yet. So accomplish, uh, it is, <laughs> sucks doing this in a car. Uh, conscious competence. All right, the next step is unconscious competence, and this is mastery. So this is where you're unconsciously good at something. And, and usually at this stage, it becomes difficult for you to unravel to someone else how you do things, why you do it so well, uh, the methods that you use to, to accomplish something. And I'll tell you guys, between, state, as, at, between stages two and three, um, are some of the greatest places to put a, uh, a teacher or students at different levels with a teacher that's kind of almost graduating to three, uh, you know, because what happens is um, 
uh, when someone is, is, is consciously competent, okay, that's stage three, they are aware of why they are good at something. And, uh, and that's a great place to be a teacher. And, um, and so a student that is consciously incompetent is, is aware that they're that stage two really needs a stage three kind of teacher. Okay. Stage four people, we just kind of look at in awe and go, that's amazing. Right. And so if you think about this as, let's say, uh, you're, you're learning guitar or you're, you're, you're going to start picking the banjo. Um, you know, you, you all start out at a, an unconscious incompetence. We all start out at stage one. We're, we're aware that we're not good, but we don't really even know why it is, how bad we are, right? We can't tune things by ear. We don't know how to um, move our, put our fingers on the, on the fretboard. Those kinds of things. We don't know how to wear the picks on our hands. We don't know how to strum. We don't know how to pick. We don't know how to do any of these things, right? Stage two is where you become consciously incompetent. You're still not good. But you do see the framework there. You see the, the framework for how to become good at something. And this is usually where people get frustrated and they quit. Okay. Because this is the, usually, if you, especially if it's not a natural gifting that you have, going from stage two to stage three, where you are consciously competent, is the longest, is the longest transition and the hardest transition. Because you're going from um, incompetence to some form of competence. And you're learning all along the while, obviously. And guys, we get stuck here. We say, well, I'm just not good at it. Or I'm never going to be a banjo player. I'm never going to be, you know, a guitarist. Maybe, you know, maybe I should just drop back to playing bass. <laughs> Dig at all my bass player friends there. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but whatever it is, you kind of stop there at that stage two, between stage two and three. And what I found, it kind of depends on what it is, but what I found, especially if we're sticking with the guitar analogy here, is that going from stage two to stage three kind of happens in leaps. And it doesn't happen when you expect it to. It doesn't happen when you want it to. I remember when I was first starting to play guitar when I was a kid. I was probably about 14 years old. And like everybody else, it was hard. You know, my fingers got really sore. Uh, they just didn't seem to work. It, it couldn't really strum like I wanted to. It couldn't keep up a rhythm. I, could know, I knew what I was supposed to do, and I, you know, I could try and put my fingers in the right places, but they just wouldn't go there naturally, what seemed like just so easy for everybody else. And literally, it was like one morning I woke up, and it just worked. It just worked. And I found that even with training the guys that make rings for me uh, with Rustic and Main, the guys that are these excellent ring craftsmen now, they... Uh, it's one of those things where it's difficult to do. It's difficult to get your hands to work right. It's difficult to... To, to make a ring turn out, you know, the, the right way that you want it to. And all of a sudden, there are these sort of leaps where, oh, I got it now. Or, oh, it just came together. I understand how to do it. And you can't really force that. It's going to happen at different stages for everybody. But you've got to understand that, you know, you can go from stage two to stage three in just about anything there is in life. Now, what stage, going from stage three to stage four is going to take... Well, what do they say? It's 10,000 hours of practice before you master a thing. Um, so it's going to take a lot longer to go from, from, uh, from to the next stage, right? So, But as long as you can kind of operate in the area of, of stage three, where you are consciously competent of something, you are actually at the best place to make money off of your competence and to train other people because of your competence. So getting to stage four and becoming an absolute master at something isn't really necessary for you to, to actually add value to other people's lives because of the, some of the best ways that you're going to add value is going to be in your ability to train, your ability to teach. And it is in that stage where you are aware of why you are doing something right. And I find that that's very helpful for me with Wolf and Iron even. You know, guys, I don't have this manliness thing nailed down. I don't even have this podcasting thing nailed down, right? Some Something that I'm supposed to be good at at this point. I've not put in my 10,000 hours yet, but I'm working on it. But I am aware of some of the things that I'm doing well. Some of the things that have made my marriage more successful than it was a year ago or five years ago. And I'm aware of the things that uh, are going well at, for me as a father. 
I'm aware of some of the things that are helping me succeed in business and as a man. And so I'm in this place where I'm able to consciously and competently talk to you guys about the areas in which I'm succeeding, right? And so that makes me of more value to the community of men than it would be as if I were just out there like some sort of Zen master. I've got all this stuff nailed down and one day you will reach this, uh, you know, the pinnacle as well. I just saw a thing on the road. I, I don't know if it's a, it's a little ADD moment for me, but it's small. It's not a gopher, but it's, uh, it's, it's not a rat, but it's small like a mouse. What would that be? You guys figure that out for me. It's not a weasel. I don't think, um, not a, not a groundhog, but it was, it could be a new species. I may have just discovered something. Anyhow, it's fuzzy. It was cute and I didn't hit it. So that was a bonus. All right. So now that I'm completely off track, I'm going to end this right here. But those are the, st the four stages where we kind of move from unconscious incompetence to a, a unconscious competence. And everybody starts at those st same stages. Everybody has to go through those stages. And so look, if, you, if you're at stage two and you realize that you are, don't give up. Stage three is right around the corner, but you don't know when it's going to happen. But it's going to happen with practice. And this could be in any area of life. It could be practicing a new, learning a musical instrument. It could be learning how to communicate with your wife effectively, which can seem like a very, very long stage one. <laughs> and if you've got teenagers in the house, that can also feel like a very, very long stage one and that they're like at stage negative four at their, at their level of maturity, but everybody's going to get there. So I hope this is helpful guys. Talk to you later.